Well, good morning and welcome to St. Paul. Thank you for joining us for worship, whether you are here in person or worshiping with us online or by radio in our parking lot. Wherever you are worshiping, we are glad that we can come together to worship Almighty God. As we begin this time of worship, I invite those who are present to please stand as you're able and let's join together in singing our hymn of praise, for the healing of the nations, and you're asked to leave your mask on as we sing together. You may be seated. And as we continue in our time of worship, for those who are worshiping with us online or out in the parking lot, you are invited to go ahead and give your offering to present your tithes and your offerings to the Lord. You may do so online or by texting your donation. Or for those who are worshiping here in person, as we leave the worship area today, there is an offering plate at the back and you're invited to place your offering to the Lord there, or you're always welcome to stop by the church office. Uh, tomorrow, in honor of Labor Day, the office will be closed, and so the office will be open Tuesdays from 1 to 3 this week for you to drop by your offering. As we continue in our worship, we'll go to the Lord in prayer, and so if you have a prayer request or you need an offering envelope, feel free to raise your hand and an usher will bring you a prayer card. Uh, also, I want to bring to your attention that we need to be praying for Margie Brown. Uh, Margie's mother passed away this past weekend, and so let's be praying for Margie and Robert and their family and all of her mother's family. So let's go to the Lord in prayer. We'll have a, a brief time of silence, and then I'll lead us through a prayer. And so let us pray. Most holy God, we gather before you to offer you our worship and our praise. For we believe you are our great creator, that each of us is created in your image, and that you love us dearly, and that as we trust in you, Lord Jesus, we become your beloved children, your beloved sons, your beloved daughters. And so as we gather here, we lift our cries to you and ask for you to hear our prayers. Today we lift up to you Margie 
and pray for her and each member of her family as they mourn the passing of their mother. Grant them your grace and your comfort. We also pray for those who mourn alongside them and for those who mourn the loss of family members and friends, whether recently or many years ago. We pray for your spirit of comfort to hold them close to your loving arms. We also lift up to you many in our congregation and those connected to us, praying for your divine touch of healing. And so we ask that in the name of Jesus, you will be with them to provide them strength and healing. We also pray that your spirit will continue to be poured upon us to empower our lives so that whether we are in church or at school, whether we are in the workplace or at home, we can be faithful to your call, the call to live as followers of you. We offer all these prayers to you in the name of our Lord and our Savior Jesus. Amen. Our reading this morning is from Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 through 9. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put it into practice, and the God of peace will be with you. The word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be, to, be God. to God. Well, beginning next week, we will begin a new sermon series based on grace. Uh, grace is one of those core Christian beliefs, and grace in our understanding helps define who we are as people called Methodists. And so beginning next week, we'll talk about grace, both in the ways to understand grace and also in the means of grace, the ability to receive God's grace in our lives. That's going to begin next Sunday, and so I encourage you to be here, to be a part of that, and also to invite others to worship alongside you, whether online or here in person. Uh, today, however, we will finish our sermon series that we've been dealing with for the last few weeks entitled Mastermind. It's that understanding that our thoughts control who we are, and often our thoughts lead us astray our thoughts lead us in the places that we don't want to be. In fact, often they end up being, well, we end up being trapped by our thoughts. That our thoughts lead us in a downward spiral and begin to control every part of who we are. And yet God in his holy word declares freedom for us as we put our faith and our trust in Jesus. That God's spirit begins to live within us so that truly we can change our thinking, so that we will no longer be defined and trapped, but truly that we can live a life that's holy and pleasing to God. But often, we do become trapped, don't we? We say that we're not. We say that we have freedom in Christ, um, but then we begin to focus on one particular thing. We, we begin to dwell on a particular subject, and it pulls us down. Now, I can phrase it that way. A more simple way to say that is we worry. Uh, are any of you 
worrisome people, uh, worry warts or whatever you want to call those. Uh, sometimes it begins very simple. Uh, you, may, you may have a very loud sneeze in the morning and you begin to think, well, maybe I'm catching a cold and, and maybe in this pandemic it's, it's not a cold. Maybe I have something worse and so maybe I should go to the doctor. But, but if I go to the doctor, well, then I may catch something and, and I don't want to catch something because then if I catch something, then I can't see my grandchildren because if I do have something and I see my grandchildren, then they may get it, then they may get sick and die. And, and if I go to the doctor, well, who's going to pay for the doctor bills? Because my bills are already really tight. And if I have to pay for the doctor bill, then I'm going to run out of money and then I'm going to get evicted and I'll be homeless. And, and it's just a sneeze. <laughs> Sometimes we allow our worries to really control us instead of turning to Christ and allowing him to transform our thinking and in turn transform our lives. And that's part of what the Apostle Paul wrote in this wonderful letter of Philippians. Now, remember, we've talked the last couple weeks about the Apostle Paul, how his dream, his desire was to go to Rome, that center of the empire, and declare not that Caesar was Lord, but declare Jesus Christ as Lord of all. And God enabled that to happen, not exactly how he wanted, but he did enable Paul to go to Rome. Rome was that place where the center of authority, but it was also one where there were prisons and jails. And so Paul went there in chains, and he ended up in this prison, in this dark place, and yet he was the one who held on to Christ. And so he writes this letter of joy and celebration. And in the midst of this, while he is in prison, he writes the verse that we read earlier, chapter 4, verse 6. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. So whenever we are worrisome, whenever we are anxious, we are called to present all of that to God in prayer. That we are to turn from our worries, to change our thinking, and to present all of those worries, all of those thoughts, all of those problems, and bring them to God in prayer. And just as we've talked the last couple of weeks, when we do that, when we begin to change our thinking, it begins to develop different patterns of thought in our minds and in our brain. In fact, there was a study that came out several years ago in a book by a doctor uh, who said that when we pray, it actually develops new pathways in our brain. Right, let me read the quote to you. It's from Dr. Carolyn Leaf in her book, Switch on Your Brain. And here's what she writes. It has been found that 12 minutes of daily focused prayer over an eight-week period can change the brain to such an extent that it can be measured on a brain scan. All right, one more time. So 12 minutes of daily focused prayer over an eight-week period can change your brain. It's that we are to bring all these worries, all these concerns, everything that weighs heavy on us, well, we're to lift them up to God. Now, we do that because we believe, as followers of Christ, that God is more powerful, that God is more powerful than any worry that you have, any concern that you have, that God is almighty, and yet God cares for you. Whatever your concern may be, no matter how small, no matter how big, that God cares for you and that he loves you and he wants what is best for your life. And so we're invited to bring to him all of our concerns, all of our worries. But yet so often we don't, do we? But we know that. We, we know that God invites us into his holy presence, but yet so often we want to hold on to our worries. We say, okay, God, I'm going to give you my child. I'm going to give you all my child's problems. But, but then when we finish the prayer, we want to take that, those problems back. 
Well, here's one definition of worry that I ran across this past week. It says, worry is the sin of distrusting the promises and power of God. It's that when we distrust, when we no longer trust in the power of God and in the providence of God, then it's leading us away from God. It's that sin that misses the mark of God's holiness. It's leading us away. So what are we to do? How can we live in this life where we do have worries and yet we're invited to trust in God? Well, Paul, in the book of Romans, chapter 8, phrases it a little differently. Let me read it to you. It's Romans chapter 8, verses 5 and 6. Those who are dominated by the sinful nature think about sinful things. But those who are controlled by the Holy Spirit think about things that please the Spirit. So letting your sinful nature control your mind leads to death. But letting the Spirit control your mind leads to life and peace. So I think for us, it's that opportunity, that invitation that we have to trust in Jesus to allow His Spirit to come into our lives to help us to break free from that destructive pattern of thinking so that truly we can experience God's life and peace. So practically, how do we do that? Uh, I think for me, um, I hear a lot of problems. It's part of being a pastor. People come and they, they share their problems. They share their concerns and often, they'll then ask me, well, what, what can we do? <laughs> now, some things, sometimes I can help them. You know, I know where we can find food. I know where some resources can be found. But often, they're bringing matters that really I can't help them with. <laughs> so their spouse is really causing a lot of problems. Their, their son has got on drugs and dealing a lot of problems. Their marriage is falling apart. They have a terrible health issue what can I do with that? Well, what we can do is we can lift it up to God in prayer. Not just as a last resort, but at that first place. We can lift that up to God. Now, the trick, the difficult part, is not only lifting up to God in prayer, but then leaving it with God. Saying, okay, God, your shoulders are broader than mine. You are more powerful than anyone else. And so I give this to you. And we leave it in God's hands. Now for some, one practical way that you could do this is you could just find you a shoebox, find you a jar, and whenever you're really worrying about a child, about a health issue, whatever it may be, well, get a piece of paper and write down your worry, whatever that worry is. Write it down, and then in your act of prayer and in your submission to God, then you place that in the box. Say, I'm leaving this with you, Almighty God. And then you leave it alone. Now, if you begin to worry, what that means is you have to go back to that box and say, God, okay, I don't believe you're powerful enough. Let me take that worry back. So are we willing to submit our lives to God, the one who really cares for us? Now, for some of you, you may say, well, that's just not practical because you can't just pray all the time. There are certain things you have to do. <laughs> and you're right. There, there are some things that you can do. So let me just give you real briefly uh, some practical philosophy of life. Uh, one is simply do what you can do. For me, do what I can do. <laughs> There are some things you can do. So if you're praying for a job, that means that you actually have to look for a job. That means you actually have to pick up the phone and call. You do have to submit that resume. You do have to submit that application. More than likely, a job's just not going to fall out of the sky. So you do have to do what you can do. Same as for your health. If you're praying for health, healing and health, well, you probably need to go to a doctor. You probably need to start eating right. You probably need to start taking some medicine. You do what you can do. But then you have to leave it up to God to allow God to do what God can do. 
Allow God to do what only he can do. And then, hear me on this, whether it happens or not, you're going to trust God. Whether it happens or not, you're going to trust God. This whole series has been talking about how our brains control who we are and how our thinking controls us who we are and controls the direction of our life. Where are your thoughts leading you? Do you like the direction that your thoughts are leading you? Is it in a good place or not? What I invite you to do as we move towards uh, communion is to, is to think about your thoughts, to take that worry, those, those problems, that concern, whatever it is, and I invite you to hand it to God, to hand it to the only one who is powerful enough, who is most gracious and loving enough to take it from you and to replace it with his peace. Today we are going to celebrate what's called the Sacrament of Holy Communion, Lord's Supper, Eucharist, uh, whatever you want to call it. Uh, it's that time where we can be reminded in a very tangible way that God loves us and that God is with us. Whenever we celebrate the sacrament, we remember God's heart that God saw us in our need, and He loved us. And it was out of His love that He sent His Son Jesus for us to live His life for us and to die for us, to take our brokenness, our pain, our guilt, our shame upon Himself, so that as we put our trust and our faith in the living Christ, then we can be forgiven. And we can truly live a life that's transformed and holy and pleased in His sight. So whenever we gather, we remember Jesus and His life. And we remember that night when He was about to be betrayed by His closest friends. He, he gathered His closest friends with Him. And they celebrated that Passover meal. During the meal, Jesus took the common food of the day, the bread and the wine, and He gave God thanks. And then Jesus took the bread and he broke it. And he said, this is my body, which is broken for you. Take and eat, for this is given to you. Do this in remembrance of me. Later on in the meal, he took the cup and after giving thanks, he shared it with them. And he said, take and drink, for this is my blood, which is poured out for you is a sign of a new covenant, a new promise to forgive you of your sins. Take and drink and do so in remembrance of me. And so we gather today in remembrance of what Jesus has done for us in full belief and understanding that, that Jesus meets us here, that as we come by faith to receive it, that God's Spirit is with us here in this room and with us in these elements to not only forgive us of our sins, but to do all that God wants in our lives as we submit and trust in Him. Today, you're invited when you receive the sacrament to hand to God your worry your burden, those things that overwhelm you, to hand that to God, to not to take it back at the end of the service, but to leave it in God's hands and to receive His grace and His peace. Let's pray together. Almighty God, we thank You for Your love for us. We thank You for Jesus. We thank You for sending Him we thank you, Lord Jesus, for dying for us. We thank you for that resurrection, for living for us. And so now we pray for your blessing upon these elements of bread and juice, that as we receive them, give us life.
transform our thinking, transform our lives so that truly we will follow you faithfully. Hear our prayers as we now pray together our Lord's Prayer as we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I invite Glenn to make his way forward. And as he does, uh, today we'll be celebrating the sacrament uh, with these pre-wrapped packages. And so there's two layers on the top. You just peel back the top layer for the wafer, and then you peel back the second layer for the juice. For those who are worshiping with us in the parking lot uh, or online, you're invited to come by the church, uh, by the drive through area, by the office, and someone will be there to serve you the sacrament for the next hour after the service. But you're invited to be a part of this. And so let us now celebrate the sacrament together. Well, let us join now together in singing our hymn of commitment. It's Lord, I need you. I'm sorry, my apologies. It is pass it on. And so you're invited to stand as you're able. And let's join together in singing pass it on.
Well, thank you again for worshiping, whether online or here in person. We're very glad that we were able to gather together to worship Almighty God. Uh, for those of you who are worshiping online or in the parking lot, communion will be served uh, following the service. You're welcome to drive through uh, the covered parking area uh, by the church offices, and communion will be served to you there. Uh, receive now this benediction and this blessing so that may God's Spirit be poured upon you. May God empower your life so that you'll be a person of peace to his world. Go in the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. You're to be seated, and then an usher will dismiss you in a moment.